Welcome back. Today's show is going to be on different printing methods, pros and cons on printing t-shirts. I'm your host Daniel Butler. Let's get started. Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the different printing methods, but we're going to talk about the ones that I understand the most. Okay, then we're going to start out with transfer and we're also going to talk about machine cut and we're also going to talk about printing machine cut, dye sublimation, director garment, and screen printing. Now, let's start off with the easiest of them all. Transfer with transfer paper. This is by far the easiest and the cheapest method to create a t-shirt and it's good for beginners. Now, some of the pros to this is, is that everything's affordable. Some of the cons are, anytime you print with a material that uses a paper substance, it's going to have a shorter lifespan due to the fact that paper does not hold good under washing conditions. But because you're able to print full color ranges using a printer, you can get a wide range of possibilities when it comes to graphics. One of the other things that becomes a con when you're using transfer paper is that transfer papers are typically either did in 11 by 17 or eight and a half by 11. And you're always confined to those dimensions. And so a lot of times, especially if you want to print on a black shirt, everything you design becomes in a rectangular shape, unless you're really good with scissors or an X-Acto knife and you decide to cut them out and place the items on the shirt where you want them. Now, if you're good with this, this is a good idea for demo shirts or getting the feel of what a graphic may look like. But I would definitely say that this is held to things that are one day events or things that aren't uh, deemed as really necessary to have a high quality. Now, if you want to step up from that, we move on to machine cut printing. Now, what is machine cut printing? There's two different methods. The first method is just going to be a plotter and a vinyl that is used for t-shirts. Now, once you insert that vinyl into the plotter, it's going to cut out your graphic and you're going to need to weave away the access to have your graphic. Then you'll apply that to a t-shirt. What are the pluses? Well, it's really good for washability and also good for short to medium runs. Some of the drawbacks are because you have to actually weave out the access of the material, you'll have issues with doing high production. You definitely don't want to be doing about 100 shirts on a machine like this unless you have the time and you have the patience to weave out each part of the graphic for each shirt you do but it is perfect for short to medium sized runs where in some cases, things like screen printing wouldn't want to pick up. Now, moving up from that, one of the next stages would be a machine that not only cuts the vinyl, but it prints on the vinyl too. And some of the added advantages to this is now you're no longer restricted to just inserting one color at a time. You can get gradients and high end graphics for the shirt or any other type of item of fabric, and it's going to be crystal clear and very efficient. Now, the drawbacks are pretty much the same. Anything that you have to weave out and then apply to a shirt is not going to be a high quantity item, but your success in being able to do things that are custom and unique and things that will hold up under wash are extremely good when you use these particular types of methods. So I recommend these for anybody that wants to have a good product, but doesn't mind doing the individual type designing that goes along with this. Now, past that, we're gonna move on to the next stage, which I would say would be dye sublimation. Very excited about dye sublimation because it's been taking the United States by storm. You see these t-shirts with graphics printed all over them, and a lot of times people don't even understand the methods that are required to produce them. Dye sublimation is a process that is printed out on something that looks like paper, but it's actually a type of ink that turns into a gas when it's actually applied to the shirt. What are the pros and what are the cons? Well, anytime you deal with dye sublimation, and we'll do a close-up of this as well, 
you're only going to be able to print on white materials. Now, the reason why a lot of times when you look at these dye sublimation shirts, you don't realize that they're printed on white is because they print the entire shirt, which also means that it has an added cost of a gigantic heat press. Now, these heat presses are not cheap and often they cost just as much as the machine. So that can be a con or a pro depending on what you have planned out because the machine itself is only going to run you about eight to nine thousand dollars but the heat press itself is going to be about about the same amount you're probably going to be able to get one in a neighborhood of about 7500 but i mean when you combine the two of these together you're still looking at something that's close to almost twenty thousand dollars when you think about what you have to actually spend out on this particular uh, machine but you make a lot more money when it comes to the individual shirt. They're charging anywhere between $55 to $45 for one shirt. And we're talking about the front and we're not necessarily talking about printing the back as well. One of the other things that you have to keep in mind when you're dealing with dye sublimation is that they print, if you print the shirts front and back and you're not a seamstress, there's gonna be what I would call stretch marks and they come in between the actual sleeves or areas that don't have the actual ink applied to it. And uh, a lot of people live with this. It's not a horrible look, but if you want to prevent that, you're going to have to do what a seamstress does and you're going to have to take your sleeves off and you're going to have to print each part of this shirt separately and then sew everything back together. So one of the cons to this is this is not going to be a high production piece, at least not in the, ad, the, the ideal uh, concept of printing and separating the sleeves apart. I mean, you can do this on a large scale, but you're gonna need a team. You know, one person doing one shirt at a time, this is definitely low quantity, but it produces some beautiful, beautiful, graphics on shirts and I highly recommend it for anybody that's able to take the investment. Now, moving up from that, direct the garment. Direct the garment was one of those methods that I had to get involved in. I do believe that somewhere down in the future, it's going to be the method to go to for printing t-shirts. It hasn't made it there yet. We've had a lot of machines and we've tried them and we've had uh, issues with the lines clogging, misprints, and a whole lot of other things that have gone wrong with these machines, but when they print extremely well, the graphics and precision of what it's laying down is very, very, very great, okay? But like I said, it's not mastered the issues that it's had, uh, even with the best machines out there. And so it still requires a couple other things. One of the things that you're gonna have to do with these particular machines is you need a pre-treatment. And these pre-treatments are critical because if you don't use them, the image will either wash away or it won't apply properly, especially if you're dealing with a black shirt. And these pre-treatment machines are at cost. They're going to run you about $3,500 to about $5,000 for these pre-treatment machines. On top of the fact that these direct to garment machines, the really good ones, are going to start in the neighborhood of $20,000 and move all the way up to $60,000. Yes, an enormous price for something that's only gonna typically print t-shirts. And so if you take that investment in mind, you're gonna to have to really think about what you're doing because this is not something that you wanna play around with and end up going in debt for. Now, once we move past direct to garment, on to what's the most common thing that we use, screen printing. Yes, screen printing is the cheapest and by far probably one of the most affordable things to do However, it does have some drawbacks. With screen printing, you're gonna to have to have several different machines. One is gonna be the press, so that you can actually screen print. You're gonna need an exposure table, some type of laser uh, printer for the film that needs to be exposed. You're gonna need a wash side unit, a flash dryer, and then also a dryer itself. So we've got about six items that you're gonna to need to be successful in, in screen printing. But the good thing about screen printing is it's been around so long that people have developed ways of making their own exposure boxes and their own washout units and a whole different types of ways of drying their uh, t-shirts by even sticking them in the oven, which I don't necessarily recommend doing it that way. But what I'm trying to get at is that 
uh, because screen printing has been around for so long, it has developed other ways of producing uh, the different equipment that you need for it. Uh, one of the other added benefits is because screen printing is so uh, widely used, the inks for it are very, very cheap. You can get a tub of ink, which might run you 24 or 30 bucks, and it will print several thousand shirts. And I mean, you can't beat that. And that's why screen printing is always a go-to for anybody doing high production. The drawback to screen printing is that if you are in low quantity, nobody's going to want to take a two day process to print two shirts. They would have to charge you an enormous amount of money and typically nobody's going to want to do it. So what is screen printing good for? The pro is it's good for high production. The con is it's not good for low production. And one of the other cons to screen printing is that if you have a multiple graphic, you're gonna to have to expose a screen for every color and every blend that goes down on that particular shirt. And this can be very labor intensive where with the other uh, methods that we talk about, how you design it is how the machine prints it and that's just all to it. You don't have to worry about screens and you don't have to worry about alignments or any of these other things that you have to do when you talk about screen printing. But screen printing is still going to be the go-to item as long as the cost remains cheap. As Soon as these other products that we have on the market become more competitive, then you're gonna see people switching over from the different methods of just screen printing. And as you see, as we go through our tutorials and we do all of the different types of printing, you're gonna see which one works for you. I recommend that you take time out and just kind of study each one. They both have their pluses and they both have their negatives, but at the end of the day, you can get some really amazing graphics from any one of these methods that I talked about. My name is Daniel Butler. Thank you for tuning in. Have a blessed day. Please subscribe so that we can blow up this channel. Have a good day.